When you're preparing for a job interview, you have probably thought about your answer to this question. What are your weaknesses? This question is frequently asked in any job interview, and it's especially relevant when you are interviewing for an executive position. It is one of the worst interview questions because it's easy to provide a well-rehearsed and expected response, which makes you come across as disingenuous. However, for a seasoned executive, there's a way to break free from the traditional answers and increase your chance of securing the top job. In this video, I'll share with you the right and wrong ways to answer this question and help you to stand out as the final candidate. I have used the same strategy to secure my second vice president position. In case you're new here, hello, my name is Tiffany. I'm the former communication vice president of the two largest companies in Sweden by market cap. In this channel, we talk about all things to help middle management get senior executive jobs. So if you want more content on this topic, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when I post new videos every Thursday. Now let's get into it. To start with, you want to understand the intention behind this question. It is used to assess your level of self-awareness and honesty. Your answer also reflects your commitment to continuous self-improvement and personal growth. This will demonstrate your willingness to learn new skills for ongoing development. Next, you want to understand when this question is being asked. If this question is asked in the first round, interviews have many options and they meet a lot of candidates for each job opening. Sometimes these interviews are scheduled for only half an hour or even less. Giving this context in the early stage, the interviewer's goal is to narrow down the pool of candidates so their brains are actively looking for reasons to reject you and your goal is to not give them any reason to exclude you from the next round. Moreover, this question is a tool for employers to understand the other aspect of your profile that are not on your LinkedIn and not on your resume. When you have reached the stage of being interviewed, it's clear that the employer is already interested in you. They have already pre-qualified you based on your resume, your LinkedIn. And of course, you would not include any negative aspects or any of your weakness in your profile. In essence, the interview serves a dual purpose of confirming your positive qualities and also understand any potential red flags. And especially for executive positions, the stakes are high and hiring the wrong person can be expensive to the organization. Therefore, interviewers want to mitigate any risk by thoroughly evaluating candidates to ensure that they make the best hiring decisions. As a seasoned leader, you have been on the both sides of the interview table, being the interviewee and the interviewer for many times. With your experience, you have now gained clarity on your career aspiration and what you want or what you do not want for your next role as well. So here comes my advice. Be upfront about your genuine weakness and shortcoming. Why do you want to do that? Because it will not only help you to avoid wasting time in the wrong job, one that does not fulfill you, but also reflect your authenticity. Having been an interviewer yourself, you know the feeling when a candidate provides an inauthentic response during an interview. It's the opposite of self-awareness, honesty, and confidence. On top of that, at this stage of your career with 20 years of experience and a track record of successes, your strengths far outweigh your weaknesses. You can offset your weaknesses through your experience and expertise. Therefore, you should have the confidence to honestly discuss your weaknesses rather than providing a cliche response just to please the other party. Now you might questioning me, should I just say anything? Well, here are three things you should avoid when answering questions about your weaknesses. Let's go through it. Rule number one is do not mention any irrelevant weaknesses. One common mistake in an interview is to talk about the gaps in area that are not even relevant to the job. For example, if you are interviewing for a CFO position, it's not relevant to mention that you are not a creative person. Rule number two is don't position yourself as the hero. So answers like I'm a perfectionist or I love speed, so I'm impatient. You want to avoid these answers. Also, what's worse than this is saying that I don't have any weakness because it can come across as unrealistic and make you appear as less confident, lack of self-awareness. If you resonate with this, hit that like button. Rule number three is do not turn your weakness into a strength. Example, because I tend to procrastinate, so I have learned to work well under pressure in order to always get work done on time. This is a terrible response. Answers like these tells me little about how a candidate face challenges and immediately shows me they are not sincere. This type of answer indicates to me that they are not willing to stand up and say what is not working. 
It's the exact opposite of what a team needs. During the interview process, you and your hiring manager should focus on gaining a complete understanding of your strengths and weaknesses. Once you are hired, both of you should be prepared to work with the real you, leveraging your strengths and addressing your weaknesses to set you up for success. For senior leadership positions, this is especially important. Forget what you have googled about interviews. The person who is interviewing you is more likely to be an executive in the company. They want to have a real conversation with a real person and real answer. If you are willing to lean into your own discomfort, the level of conversation improves dramatically. You have a great time getting to know each other in an authentic way. What the interviewer really want to find out is whether you have the self-awareness, whether you are able to be critical, and most importantly, whether you will be able to tell the truth, which is very difficult for most people. I want to share with you four simple guidelines to keep in mind when you talk about your weakness. First is you want to be honest and be specific. As Thomas Jefferson once said, honesty is the first chapter in the book of wisdom. When addressing your key weaknesses, focus on these are relevant to the job. When you talk about your weakness, don't rationalize, don't ramble. For example, during a job interview for the vice president role, I openly discussed my direct and brutally honest communication style, which sometimes could hurt my team members' feelings and cause misunderstandings. The interviewers appreciated my honesty and even related to this challenge. This level of transparency and vulnerability helped me progress to the next round of interviews. Second, talk about how you can offset your weaknesses with your strengths. You can show how you balance out your weaknesses with complementary skills or approaches. For example, when talking about my tendencies to be too direct and also offending people sometimes, I also talk about my concerns for other people's feeling and my eagerness to get feedbacks. This way, I can in time address any misunderstanding or misinterpretation of the real intention behind my words. What's the best answer you have given in your interview? Comment below. Now let's move on. Guideline number three, show ongoing effort. You can demonstrate that you are actively working to mitigate your weaknesses. You can give examples to show how you remain mindful of your weaknesses and the steps you've taken to prevent them from causing any issue or further risk. I can share an example from one of my clients when he talked about how he is a performance-driven leader, which sometimes leads to stepping on other people's toes. To manage this, he shared that he includes a daily reminder in his morning routine to check in with his team members, ask open-ended questions during meetings, and preventing tension from escalating while he is being too focused on these KPIs and numbers. Next is to leverage a team or your partnerships. So if your weakness relates to teamwork or collaboration, you can share how you leverage the strengths of others in your team or network. So for example, as the vice president of communication, I acknowledge that I may not be able to write or speak like a native speaker. I'm originally from China and English is only my second language. So to compensate this, I hire people who can do so and agencies from native English speaking countries and their expertise complements mine. So as a team, we together represent our brand professionally on media, internally and externally. If you're serious about your career advancement and you want to get results in the next three to six months, submit your application to the 1% Academy program where I will be coaching you. Go to inspiremyday.org slash apply or click the link in the description below to book a free strategy call with me. For now, I'll leave you with this video to find out what to do after a final round of executive job interview. I'll see you there.